Hank, can you give us a one-liner about reloading technology and what you bring to the market? We are a technology company that's focused on bringing high-tech, innovative solutions to the firearms community and specifically the reloading part of the firearms community. So that brings us to annealing. Why do we uh, anneal case brass? Well, there are two main functions for and two main reasons that we anneal. One is for cost savings. We extend the life of a brass cartridge significantly when we anneal. The other is for consistency because when you anneal you can make sure that each cartridge once it goes through your dies is exactly the same as every other cartridge in your batch. What is brass annealing? Well, brass annealing we have to take a step back and look at essentially the metallurgy of brass. Brass is quite an unusual metal in that it can't be quench hardened, it can only be work hardened. And by work hardening we mean that when a case is fired and then resized, the grain structure, which we'll get to in a minute or two probably, is resized and reshaped as it goes through. And as you do that, each case hardens at a slightly different rate. And when that hardens, you get different spring rates of your brass. So, and when it gets too hard, your brass eventually gets brittle and starts to split. So that is the process of hardening the brass. Now we've got to draw that back and anneal the brass, which is a reformation of the brass crystals and the metallic crystals inside the brass so that they can become uniform and more ductile again. So there's been some constro uh, controversy and anecdotal evidence of different manufacturers' brass makeup requiring different annealing procedures. What are your thoughts on this? The, while each manufacturer might have slightly different brass exact chemical makeups, cartridge brass as a, as a whole is quite uniform. The different manufacturers might add slightly different contents of zinc and aluminium and uh, other chemicals and other metallic elements like that. On the whole, however, your main differentiating factor in brass differing um, annealing procedures between differing brass manufacturers is more a case on cartridge geometry. So you might have one manufacturer with very, very thin necks, whereas you have another manufacturer that is more oriented to a military brass where the necks are much thicker. Now that slight variation in neck thickness dramatically affects the volume of brass that's present while you are heating. If you have changed the volume of brass that you're trying to heat, you dramatically change how much energy you have to put in to get to the same point of heating and the same temperature. So, how does an induction coil work? Well, when you're looking at induction, induction is an interesting heating mechanism where it's it's no contact, so there's no physical contact between your heating tool, which is your induction coil, and your workpiece. An induction coil is an electrical system where it induces a current in your workpiece. Our case, our workpiece is always our piece of brass. And an induction coil works very similar to an induction hob that you might have seen in a kitchen. And what it does is it creates a very high speed oscillating magnetic field by using very large electrical currents. Now your workpiece, in this case which is a single piece of brass, is exposed to that magnetic field and it creates an electric current that flows inside that piece of brass. And with that electric current that flows inside that piece of brass, it heats up. Like any conductor when you pass a large current through it, it will heat up. In our case, we're probably looking at hundreds of amps moving through that small piece of brass, which allows it to heat up in fractions of a second. And why is it as precise as it is? What you've got with induction heating is all your variables are very tightly controlled in induction heating. The energy that you put into the coil is electrically regulated. So you are only putting in seven, eight hundred watts of power into your induction coil. 
then the coupling between your induction coil and your actual workpiece, your brass case in this, uh, in this instance, that geometry is fixed. So that vari variable never changes. And if your input energy remains constant and your geometry remains constant, the only variable that you actually have is the time that you expose your workpiece to your um, heating uh, heating force or uh, heating current in our case. What variables are there in case annealing? Well, as we've just said, there are several. So your main ones are the geometry of your case. That drives the bulk of the variables because the geometry of your case dictates how much mass or how much brass is physically present in the induction coil. Now, when you have those variables tightly measured and tightly controlled, you have 90% of the variables nailed down. Your other variables become how long you put it in the coil, where you position your coil, and how long, have I said how long you run your coil before? So, how long you run your coil, where you place it in the coil, and then essentially the coil geometry itself. Out of all of those variables, the only one that remains a true variable is where, uh, how long we run it, because everything else is fixed. It's governed by the geometry of the system. Tell us how the Reload Technology app works. Well, what we've got is now, as we've said earlier, we've nailed down all of the other variables. What we've done in our app is instead of having to sacrifice cases and guesstimate where your actual um, annealing point is, we've used some basically fancy maths to do it. What we've done is we've taken the geometry of a case as a starting point because all chambers are different. We've taken the CIP geometries to give everybody a starting point. We've listed those CIP governing dimensions for a case in the app where you can pre-select a 308 Winchester, 260 Remington, 65 Creedmoor and that will give you a baseline for all your cartridge dimensions. From your cartridge dimensions you will take a caliper, a micrometer preferably and then fine-tune those dimensions to the point that you have them accurately sized in the app. Using that input we will then get a very very accurate and consistent method for calculating using our derived equations that we've done through our testing. Using those inputs we will then get an estimated time for your specific case and that will then be the baseline for your case moving forward. And how does the app work with the reload annealer we see next to you? What we'll have is the app is very simple. It communicates to the reload annealer via Bluetooth. Your profile is stored online, so if you lose your phone, you never actually lose any of your data because none of the data is stored on your phone. What you'll have is once you've turned on the app, you'll pair it like any other Bluetooth device through your phone's Bluetooth menu. Once you've paired it, you will then open your app log into your account on the app, enter your cartridge details, and once you've entered your cartridge details and paired the reload annealer to the phone, you will see an option to send data to your device. Once you click send, it sends it via Bluetooth and adjusts it. You then also have the option to start and stop the machine. It gives you a log when you are annealed, how many cases you've annealed for that batch. You're, you can also through the app identify individual batch numbers. So if you have different lots of brass that you've weight sorted and batch sorted, you can have individual lots for each of those loads and lots of brass in the app so that you can keep track of where you are with each batch of brass. And tell us about the automated case feeder and why it's important. Bringing technology to the annealing field, it doesn't help having an incredibly accurate machine and then man manually having to feed cases in. 
we need to solve problems, not make another problem. So having a machine that can automatically do cases and sitting and feeding in case by case makes no sense. So the differentiating factor here is having a fully integrated system. Cases in the top, get cases out the bottom. There's no human interaction, there's no fiddling with the machine. You set it once and you run it. There's no having to fiddle with it, setting it, getting it right and changing cases between it because nobody shoots just one rifle. Is a very simple setting. There's no Allen keys that you have to adjust. You change your feeder plate and you change your caliber plate. The other settings are done through your phone. It's all logged. So it's about making it simpler. Shooting's complicated enough with all the other things we have to worry about. Let's not make it more complicated by making annealing appear to be voodoo. So what differentiates Reload Annealer to other products on the market? It's quite simple. We went into the design of this machine to spend more time on the shooting range and less time in the basement reloading, burning fingerprints off, fighting with machines that almost did what you wanted to do. They do great jobs, but they don't quite do everything right. And that's why we, from start to finish, we've developed a machine that can take cases, pour them in the top, and you get cases out the bottom. There's no fighting with it, there's no setting it, there's no having to deal with essentially changing and keeping track of several components for every single cartridge that you fire. None of us shoot only one rifle. So the machine is designed to be able to move between cartridges from 223 to 308 to 375 Shaytac or your um, 375 h and H without needing to clutter your desk with a whole lot of stuff. It's simple, it's easy, it allows you to do what you actually want to do, which is shoot. Uh, what is the sole driver of re reloading technology? We help you optimize your shooting accuracy. Less time spent faffing, more time spent shooting.